All right, good morning. Happy Easter. Jesus Christ is risen from the, the dead. He's living today. And that makes all the difference. It changes everything. And boy, even though we're not able to, to meet together, we do miss you guys. We love you guys. Um, we are sorry that we're not able to meet together. But you know what? Jesus Christ is still on the throne and he's still in charge and he still has this and we're going to celebrate together. Now, I know all of you aren't going to be able to see each other this morning uh, here live, but we do have a special uh, video after the message. I want you guys to stick around because we're going to have some greetings, some videos, some pictures uh, that different people in the church have sent to us and we put it all together and we're going to show that uh, toward the end of the service so stick around because we're excited to to uh, share that with you guys um, that even though we're separated by space we're not separated in our hearts we are united completely uh, in one faith in one savior and lord who is risen from the grave and he's alive today. So we're excited about uh, singing to that Jesus Christ. We are excited about uh, teaching about him. We're excited and we want you to be excited too. And we hope that you have that resurrection hope, that resurrection heart this morning. And we're going to do our best to make that focus for you. Uh, but let's pray and then let's get started. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he is a living, risen Savior. We thank you for Easter. We thank you for the hope and for the renewal that Jesus Christ brings. And we pray that we would experience that this morning, all for your glory. Be with us during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, and good morning. We are so blessed to be celebrating Easter with you wherever you're at, in your homes, with your families, by yourself, just turning, uh, turning that volume up, worshiping with us, and singing out his praises this morning. Let's start things off with the wonderful cross.
Bibles this morning, um, just remembering what today is all about, that we serve a risen Savior, and so we are just going to proclaim that and proclaim it loudly this morning, my Redeemer lives. Put your hands together and help me with this one. When he 
All right, Hebrews chapter 4 is where we're going to be this morning. We're going to talk about uh, not quitting because Jesus has made a way. So we hold on because Christ has already made a way for us. And if anything we learned this Easter is that Jesus Christ set it up so that we could hold on. So that no matter what the circumstance is, no matter what's happening in your life today, that you could hold on. Through Jesus Christ. I want to read to you Hebrews chapter 4, 14 through 16, and then we'll look at it. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to the confession. For if we do, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tested in every way as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us at the proper time. All right, let's pray, and then let's take a look at that. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you so much for his resurrection, for the life that he brings us. I pray that we would get that. I pray that we would understand that even in the times that we're facing now, even when things are difficult and so many are struggling with so many different things that are happening god we ask now that we could see jesus that we could really see him for who he is and what he's doing in our lives today open us up to that reality in jesus name amen so abraham lincoln went through a lot of trials in his life he had a lot of difficult situations to encounter when he was in his 20s he was engaged to be married to a woman named Anne, but Anne died before they could even be married. It was a heartache and a sorrow that would stay with him for his whole life. Several different times, he ran for public office and uh, didn't win. As a matter of fact, even though he won a state legislature position, two years later he lost, then he ran for the US Senate and lost, then he made a bid for the vice presidency and lost, then he made another bid for the US Senate and lost, and when he finally did win the presidency in 1860, it was 
a really difficult time to be a president, most difficult time in our history, because uh, during that time, he entered into the Civil War. And the question is, how did he keep fighting? How was he able to keep going when things had gotten so difficult? Well, he wrote a letter to a friend and law partner, and this is what he said. You cannot fail in any laudable object unless you allow your mind to be improperly directed. So Lincoln knew that thinking wrong was going to lead to uh, a wrong path. But as long as he managed to stay in touch with what he needed to think, how he needed to think, that he would be able to get through any situation. As a matter of fact, that same law partner and friend wrote this about Lincoln. He said, Mr. Lincoln was a peculiar man. He was intensely thoughtful, persistent, fearless, and tireless in thinking. So I say all that to say this, that it's really important this Easter, it's really important for us to have the right frame of mind and to think the right way about Jesus. To not just say, well, isn't it nice Jesus rose from the dead, but to think deeply about the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. And this morning, I want to focus on two vital truths. I want to dig deep on two vital truths from our text this morning, because I think it's so important that we think deeply about the fact that Jesus Christ died and rose again for us to bring us life. So the first thing I want us to think deeply about is that Christ descended to serve, but ascended to reign so we can hold on, okay? He descended to serve, but he ascended to reign so we can hold on in every situation. Christ cut a path for us to follow. He did what we need so badly, but he did it by Philippians 2, says he did it by emptying himself and assuming the form of a slave and taking on the likeness of men and when he had come as a man in his external form he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross in this incredible moment where he came to serve the entire world everything changed because on Easter Sunday Jesus wasn't in the grave Okay, he descended to serve, he humbled himself to the point of death on the cross, but what happened after that? What happened was he rose again and he rose to reign. Listen to what Philippians 2, 9 and 10 says, for this reason, that is because Christ humbled himself to the point of death, even death on the cross, for this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that's above every other name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, right here in Hebrews chapter 4 that we just read, right here, what does Jesus, what does it say about Jesus? It says that he ascended into the heavens. It says that he ascended to the heavens, that is to reign. He is where we want to go. He has done what we long to do. He has conquered what we so desperately want to have the victory in. All of that, Jesus has done for us by ascending into the heavens, and he ascended to reign. Listen to what Ephesians 4.10 says. The one who ascended far above the heavens, that he might fill all things. He is the ruler of all. He is the one who's in charge. Okay? So how did he do this? How did he make this way for us to be engaged in his victory? How do we get to share in his reign? Well, by becoming the high priest. Jesus became the high priest. That's what the Old Testament says. The Old Testament uh, says that the high priest was the one who interceded for people. Well, Christ, here in Hebrews, became our high priest. Well, listen to what Hebrews 5.1 says. It makes it clear. Every high priest taken from men is appointed in service to God 
for the people to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Old Testament, the, the high priest was the one who interceded. They would bring the sacrifices into the holiest place and sacrifice for the people. Now, they needed also to sacrifice for themselves, but here's the thing, that, that Jesus didn't need to sacrifice for himself so he could be our sacrifice. That is, he could take all the wrongs that we had done on himself and he could become God's sacrificial lamb. So God presented his own sacrifice Human beings throughout history, the high priest would bring human sacrifices, that is the sacrifice of animals, not people. <laughs> the sacrifice of animals from humans and by humans to appease God. But God brought his own sacrifice in Jesus Christ. And so Christ brought himself as the sacrifice and he did the hard part. Think about this. In one lifetime, he showed people who God was and what it meant to, to be the person that God wants us to be. He gave us that template. He gave us that design. He said, this is what a person is supposed to be like. But think about this. Not only did he do that over his lifetime, but in one weekend, in one weekend, he beat Satan. In one weekend, he took all our sin and beat sin, and in one weekend, he beat death. He destroyed them all. He stared them down in the face and said, I will beat you, and he did it. He was able to do what we couldn't do so we can hold on. We don't need to quit. Why? Because he's already secured the victory by interceding on our behalf. So we can hold on to the faith that we have in him because he is the victorious one, the high priest who interceded for us and did what we couldn't do. Okay, so that's the future, right? We're going to reign with him. We're going to be able to pass into the heavens just like he did. And we are going to get to be victorious over all the things that he was already victorious over. But you might say, well, what about today? What about right now? So here's the second thing that I want you to really focus on this morning. It's that Christ was tested in every way, but without sin, so we can hold on. Christ was tested in every way, but without sin, so we can hold on. You might be tempted to think, well, if Jesus overcame everything, maybe he has no sympathy for us. You know, you ever had this where, where you overcome something and you're able to do something and you think everybody else should be able to do it too and you have very little sympathy for anybody who can't do it. You think, well, those people must not be committed as I am. Maybe you think that's the way Jesus would think, but it's not. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that Jesus is the high priest who is able to sympathize with our weaknesses. That's what verse 15 says. It says, he was tested in every way as we are. He saw all the weaknesses firsthand. This is not a Jesus who can't sympathize with us and sympathize with what's going on and the limitations of life and uh, the way we are so weak, so limited, so unable to do what we would like to do. So much like, um, Ever feel that way where you go, I just can't do it. I can't continue in it. I don't have the strength to do it. And I've been thinking about that lately as so many stresses are on so many people. And I, I thought about uh, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is uh, basically the story of this ring. It's an evil ring that will destroy everything if it's not destroyed. It ends up in the hands of this lowly little hobbit named Frodo. And Frodo has the job of taking this ring to Mount Doom and destroying it before it's able to overtake the land with evil. And so he has this group of people, and in the first book, The Fellowship of the Ring, uh, there's this group that gathers together in an attempt to take the ring to have it destroyed. And in one of the moments uh, where Frodo is reflecting, and he's wondering if he's going to be able to do it. This is what Frodo says. He says, I wish 
It need not have happened in my time. I wish it had need not happened in my time. I wish it hadn't happened. I wish this wasn't happening to me the way it's happening to me. And then Gandalf says, so do I. And so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that's given us. And maybe you don't like the time. Maybe you're like Frodo and you go, I wish it hadn't happened in our time. I wish that these things weren't happening right now. But the question for us all is, what are we going to do with the time that's given us? What are we going to do with what's given? Because Christ is calling us not to quit. And we're not alone. And I want you to consider this, that in this difficult time, in this time where you're uh, feeling the stress and the strain and wondering, is this going to break us as a country? Is this going to break us as a people? Is, is this going to break my community? Is this going to get to the point where where it's just too much. I want you to consider this. I want you to consider Jesus and that you're not alone. And this isn't just a Jesus who is sentimental Jesus, okay? He's not just, oh, I feel your pain. I'm so sorry you're going through all this. No, no, no. This is the Jesus who can help us. Listen to verse 16. It says, therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us at the proper time. Okay? Because of what Christ did, because of how he brought us life, in the present tense, in the present situation, we can go to God boldly and say, we need help, we need your grace, we need you in this moment. He can give grace and help. Jesus Christ can help you fight whatever you're going through. Listen to verse 15 again. It says, We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tested in every way as we are, yet without sin. Listen, sin didn't get him. Sin has gotten every single one of us, but sin didn't get him. And he did what we could never do. He was able to live the life that was consistent with obedience to God's will and God's way. He lived it. Sin didn't get him. He won over sin. And because sin didn't get him, he could deal with all sin by taking it on himself. And he did just that. This is what Colossians 2.14 says. He erased the certificate of debt with its obligations that was against us and opposed to us. He's taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. So he died for your sin. You see, sin didn't get him, but he willingly took it all on, dying for your sin. And because sin didn't get him, but he willingly took it on, death couldn't hold him. Listen to Acts 2.24. God raised him up. Ending the pains of death. Because, listen, it was not possible for him to be held by death. Death couldn't hold him. 1 Corinthians 15, 25, and 26 says this about Jesus. He must reign until he puts all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be abolished is death. But all that began with his death and resurrection. Christ is without sin. Because he's without sin, he took the sin of the world and paid the penalty for us all. And because he's without sin, death couldn't keep him in the ground. He paid for that sin. And because death couldn't keep him down, he won victory over death through his resurrection. And because he won victory over death through his resurrection, he is able to offer that same life to everyone who believes. Listen, 1 Corinthians 15, 53 through 55, tells us that we get that same inheritance, that we are going to put on that same immortality that Jesus Christ has, that same life, that death is not going to be the end. It's not the final statement for us. So listen to what it says. This corruptible, 
must be clothed with incorruptibility. And this mortal must be clothed with immortality. When the corruptible is clothed with incorruptibility, and the mortal is clothed with immortality, then the saying that is written will take place, death has been swallowed up in victory. Death, where's your victory? Death, where is your sting? So we can hold on. We can hold on because even death doesn't win. And all the things that you're going through and all the times that you're feeling, oh, I just feel so weak. I feel like I don't know that I can make it. He is the high priest who is over all, who has made the way and opened up an opportunity for us all. And it's not just an opportunity for heaven. It's an opportunity today to find grace and help in our time of need because he is sympathetic towards us. He feels it. And not only does he feel it, he is here to help in time of need. Now, here's the thing. If you're listening to this and you go, well, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Uh, help today and eternal life for all time. The thing is, you have to believe. You have to believe Christ and not just kind of a, a passing, well, yeah, that sounds about right. No, you have to take that on for your own life. You have to say within your own heart, I'm going to make him my Savior and Lord. He's the one who can save me. I can't save myself. And he's the one who's in charge. I can't lead myself. And I'm going to uh, follow him. That's what it's about. If you've never done that, oh man, you need to. You need to because that's the most important decision you're ever going to make. Don't put it off. Don't go, yeah, 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 I get it. I, maybe sometime. No, 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 no. You do it today. You do it today because Christ is uh, waiting. He's waiting, and really, that's the only reason that things haven't all been set right already. It's because Jesus Christ wants as many people as possible to come in and reign with him before he sets it all up. And you do not want to be on the rebellious side of that reign. You want to be with him, but you got to do that today. you got to start now, because he is going to set everything right. He is going to set things right. He already did that through the cross and resurrection. He's already been exalted. And there is a final day where death's going to be done away with, where all the sorrow, all the crying, all the pain, everything is done away with. And we're going to live as we were always meant to live. But that's for those who say yes to him. So this morning, say yes to him. And if you're a Christian already, you say, no, I know I've done that. I believe. No matter what struggle you're going through today, no matter what's happening in your life, and we have many, many things going on with many people um, that are hurting in one way or another, Jesus Christ is there. He's there as your intercessor still today, the high priest who will bring help and grace that is God's favor to you in the time of trial. That is Easter right there. Easter is the statement that Christ went through the suffering so that he could aid the sufferer. He could aid those who were unable to do it. He can take the sinner and make them righteous. He can make the brokenhearted whole again. This is what he does. This is who he is. Don't neglect that. Don't um, put that aside. Don't miss it. Hold on this morning because you know what? He's secured the victory for you. Why would you want to listen to anyone else or anything else? Why would you want to deviate from the path that he has for you? Hold on. Let's pray. God, we thank you that through Jesus, you've set the path for us. We thank you that through Jesus, you've given us victory. We thank you through Jesus that even in trying times, we can hold on and still remain secure in the confession of our faith. So God, I, I ask now that you would help us to remember Jesus, not just as the historic death and resurrection, but as the raised Christ within us, who is there to intercede for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. 
All right, so we're going to show a video now of everybody. Uh, there's some pictures, there's some videos. This should be good, and then we're going to do one last song. Good morning, everyone. I uh, just wanted to wish everybody a very happy Easter. Uh, we know that this is a day where Christians everywhere are celebrating the resurrection of our dear Lord, and uh, it's been difficult to not be together to worship, but uh, I pray uh, for each of you and uh, miss you all and pray for God's peace on everyone, especially today. God bless you all. Love you. Bye. From the Garcia family to your family, we love you. We miss you. Happy Easter. Hi. Hi, everybody. I didn't get dressed or anything, so you can really believe me. I am sick. I miss you all, but I wanted to say Happy Easter to everybody that thinks about me. I love you in Christ. Miss Minnie Martinez. Hey. Say hi. Say happy Easter. enjoyed that. It was so great to see everyone's faces and to hear some of your voices and uh, just to be able to celebrate again once once again with you this morning. Uh, let's end things out with uh, this final song this morning. What a beautiful name, the name of Jesus.
proclaim that message to our world. That we would all come to that salvation and knowing of who you are. We thank you so much for joining with us this morning, for celebrating this morning's Easter service. We pray uh, that you have a blessed, healthy, safe, happy week, and um, enjoy the rest of your day celebrating with your family. And we hope to see uh, you guys uh, tuning in on Wednesday for our Wednesday night message. Uh, don't forget about the kids' message right before that. And uh, continue to share and like and spread the news of this Easter.